welcome friends to this monthly meeting for those who are traveling on the spiritual path those who follow the spiritual path have noticed that the kind of mind we have unless we keep on reminding ourselves the importance of the main purpose of human life to realize our own true self and to find our true home the mind distracts us constantly and brings us back into worldly activities which we think are very important we give so much importance to the worldly things that are around us we forget and this is not going to last very long human life is not that long in terms of cosmic time world has existed for billions of years we are here for a very short time and we leave the body when we leave our bodies we leave everything behind and all those great plans we make all the great possessions we try to gather together they all left behind nothing goes with us it's amazing that in spite of this knowledge we are so busy collecting things making plans buying properties buying other valuable things buying jewelry that will go with us forever it doesn't we don't know what happens when we die but some people who have been able to have near death experiences or some people who have had experience of dying while living through meditation they tell us that nothing that you are planning here is of any consequence in the long run and is a very minor trivial thing compared to what your life will be after you die sometimes we feel maybe there is no life after we die and when we die we suddenly find we are not dead we are not prepared for that those who think that we will be alive after death in some other form they are surprised that form has nothing to do with the material world that we were living in the material world fades away as if it did not exist so that is why we spend so much time in doing things which are not in our own best interest our best interest is to make use of this time we have while we are physical human beings to get to know who we truly are find out where do we belong and see if we can find a way to go to our true home while we are still here so we are sure that this is not something we are leaving to chance but we are going to get it here people who are aware of this we call them seekers of the truth seekers of their true home these seekers seek from inside they don't know where the seeking is coming from their mind is not seeking the mind is seeking worldly goods the mind is seeking worldly pleasures the mind is seeking to get more things here the mind is getting more and more attached and desires more things of the external created world therefore the one who seeks is our self not the mind but for a long time we have believed that the mind and the self are the same every time we use our mind to do its basic function which is thinking we say i think so the i the self has been associated with the thinking process for so long that we do not even distinguish between our own self and our mind mind is merely a machine it's an organic machine is built into us it functions through the brain it's an organic thing and its main function is thinking it thinks all the time its life is thinking if the mind does not think it will die therefore it thinks 24/7 it thinks while we are alive it is like the heartbeat of the body the circulation and the body keeps us alive when heart stops beating we are dead when the mind stop thinking the mind is dead so we are using 
a equipment given to us very useful equipment thinking is very useful thinking understanding making sense of things making sense of perception making sense of the world very beautiful very useful but we cannot call it ourself when we call it ourself big confusion starts because the mind wants to go out seeking says let me find something that's inside who am i who am i really so this conflict continues so that is why the seeking comes not from the mind the seeking of the truth the seeking of your own self the seeking of of a true home is not coming from the mind but coming from our true self which some people call a soul that the soul is not the same thing as a mind soul is our self soul is life soul is consciousness soul is what makes it possible for us to have a life and and experience what we are experiencing outside so if we know that we are not the mind but the soul we will make very good use of the mind we'll use it very efficiently we'll make the mind think what we want it to think that doesn't happen now the mind thinks on its own and we believe we are thinking the self is thinking therefore we follow the mind and the mind keeps us distracted from our own self all our life the very purpose of these meetings once a month is to remind ourselves that the following up of the mind the following what the mind is telling us is not the purpose of human life the mind is telling us enjoy life and is making us almost like an animal animals live like that and we live very similar to them if we merely follow the mind but the capacity to contemplate and to think where am i who am i that is not given any prominence when we meet once a month we understand what is the purpose of human life why is it different from all other life forms one big difference you can notice straight away is only in human life we have an experience called free will free will gives us an experience as if we are the makers of our own destiny we can make a choice where we want to go that's a great experience to have the experience of free will that we can decide what to do we can decide where to go that free will can be used to go to our own true self we don't know what the age of our true self is we read about it hear about it soul is immortal we are immortal beings we are here temporarily covered by a body which will die if there is a soul that is immortal it must have another place to be in in its immortality this is not the place where it can be it's functioning in a human body in the physical plane but does not mean that it belongs here so if we have free will to make a choice we can make a choice to find who we are seeking is a great thing to use free will and seek your own self we look around in this world and we find that it is all created temporary nothing we see outside is going to be permanent not even the suns and moons and stars they also have a life they will also die the whole universe is bound to die we die first of all we other thing die later something die before us everything dies here and immortality has nothing to do with this experience here therefore we read about it and hear about it that our own soul which is making us alive in this temporary place is immortal and will not die worth while finding out who are we then can we check it out while we are here or do we have to wait till we leave the body at death and then find out if we are still here or not the beauty of this human body is it enables us 
to find the truth about ourselves while we are still here. We can have the exact experience which we will have when the body dies right now without waiting for death to come. And that experience is called dying while living. It's been mentioned again and again that you want to find who you are, die while living. Dying while living does not mean committing suicide. It means finding what happens to the body when we die can be simulated, can we pretend to go through that process? If we can, we should be able to find out what happens if we are getting the same, same, same symptoms, same signs on the body which we are likely to get when we die. If you have seen people dying, at my age, I am going to be 92 this year, I have seen many people die. Most of my friends have died. Many of them I have seen dying in their terminal illnesses, in hospices. And I have seen when a person dies, the body is not left immediately. It goes gradually. Death comes upon this body gradually. It appears that the hands and feet of a body die first. I have seen people dying, saying, I don't know where my hand is. Will you please place my hand on the left side? The hand is already on the left side. The awareness of the hand disappears. The awareness of the feet disappears. Then the legs and the arms follow. As if death is starting from the extremities of this body and moving upwards. Then it, when it finishes with the extremities, the legs and the arms, it starts on the bottom of the torso. And the person feels, I am floating. You are not floating, you just lost the awareness of the bottom. Then it keeps on coming up. We are losing awareness. The loss of awareness at death is an amazing experience that proceeds in a particular way. And as it goes up, we are unable to speak. Our eyes are seeing. We reach the neck. We are dead up to this point. We are still alive. The head is still alive. We can see the eyes moving of the person dying. Eyes are trying to communicate. Mouth can't speak. Eyes become still. Brain is dead. Person is dead. Body is gone. Process I have seen so many times. Can we create the same process artificially and have the same experience which we will have when we die? Answer is yes. You will be surprised that these Great yogis, saints, others who followed meditation, the meditation, using their attention for meditation, they were trying the same process. We have been drawing awareness from the extremities of our body up to the head in real death of the physical body. We can do the same thing by pulling our attention into the head from the rest of the body through what we call a meditative exercise. It's not difficult. Not only the concept is dif not difficult, the practice is not difficult. If we know where do we operate from in the wakeful state, in a physical body, sitting here in our physical bodies, where are we operating from if we are life force, not the body? If we are a life force operating this body from inside, where do we operate from? Little contemplation can tell us, if you want to ask a question, where am I, the one who is thinking, the one who is asking this question, where am I asking from? Answer will come, you are not asking from the hands, not from the feet, not from the legs, not from the arm, not from the torso. It's all being asked from the head. It doesn't take too long to know that we are operating this whole body from our brain, from our head. Where exactly in the head? Even that is not difficult to find out. We are looking out in this world with these two eyes. The two eyes are not seeing the same thing. They are seeing two pictures. But we are not seeing two pictures. Where are we combining the two pictures the two eyes are seeing? They are seeing two different pictures. Just because of their distance. Where are we combining the two pictures to see one picture? Contemplate. And you will find you are doing it in the middle of the head, 
behind the eyes. Almost at the eyes where my fingertips, where they join here, that way backwards, in the middle of the head, we are combining and seeing the world. It's an important point to know that in the center of our head, behind these eyes, almost to the line with the ears where we have, we are combining and seeing the world, we are thinking from there, we are operating from there, we are alive from there. Wonderful place to know in your own body that we have a wonderful place sitting in our head behind the eyes and people have called it third eye. Third eye center, center of consciousness, center of life, center of the brain, pituitary body, pineal glands, most protected area of the brain. You can describe the location, but do we have to Describe a location to know where it is? Not at all. You close your eyes and say, where am I thinking from? You'll be there. In a wakeful state, we are always there. And people come to me and tell me, we are searching hard for the third eye center. I got surprised, you are at the third eye center. You can't be awake. You can't be alive and awake without being at third eye center. You're not looking for third eye center. You are there. The biggest problem comes up when we want to go somewhere where we already are. Then we can't find the route because we are already there. We are destination and we are looking for how to go there. So that is why we mislead ourselves. We are at the third eye center when we are awake in the physical body. What is needed is not finding the third eye center. What's needed is to concentrate our attention there. This is a great gift given to us. Consciousness which gives us life is the best. Next best is that in consciousness we have the power of attention. That we can attend to what we like. This consciousness is a scattered experience. We are conscious of the whole all. We are conscious of the you know, mind of the whole world. We are conscious of our homes. We are conscious of our cars. Conscious of our relations. They are all part of consciousness. Visual consciousness is only of this small place. I am conscious there are beautiful flowers here. I saw from the corner of my eye. Now I want to look at them. I can concentrate and see them more beautifully. This power of putting attention on one part of your awareness is the greatest gift given to us. And is the secret of meditation. The secret of dying while living. If we can use this wonderful gift given to us, attention and the power to concentrate it wherever we like. We don't have to concentrate it on flowers or on a book or on somebody else. We can concentrate it on ourselves. If we concentrate our attention on our own self, behind the eyes, where we are belonging, where we are functioning from, as conscious beings, if we withdraw attention by concentrating attention on wherever we believe we are, we don't have to search for any place. We are there. The real secret is not to try to focus attention somewhere, which we have been taught how to use attention. We are always told how to put attention somewhere is to focus on something. When you focus on something, it's always something different from your own self. Now we are talking of withdrawing yourself, withdrawing your attention. Withdrawal of attention is not the same thing as focusing attention. Therefore, some people even trying to withdraw attention to the third eye center to experience dying while living are making an image of themselves. A small image somewhere in their imagination, they say, that's where I'm supposed to be. That's not third eye center. Third eye center is where you're looking at the image from. You are in your imagination making something in front of you. You can't make an image on yourself. Therefore, it's a big mistake. People have spent decades of meditation trying to meditate upon something they created in front of them. It doesn't work. Withdrawal of attention to yourself is a secret. And to withdraw attention to yourself, you can use imagination a little differently. Instead of making an image of yourself, imagine you are in the head of this body. 
the simpler consider this body of yours like a house and in this house you are living in the head it's easier even if you say this house has six floors because six centers of energy that are placed in this body if you take them as six floors in this house body shaped like a house you are putting your attention you can take it where you like so therefore am i interrupting something <laughs> thank you if you can consider this body to be your house in which you are living that does not need too much imagination and imagination is another gift if you can imagine this body of yours is a house in which you live you are on the sixth floor behind the eyes the other center the throat the heart, and those are below you you can look down you can say yes there is a staircase that i can go down into the lower floors there is a elevator in the spinal cord you can think very imaginatively very nicely about this body as a house here in the sixth floor in the center you don't have to go there you are there you close your eyes you are there imagine that you are there doing things there you are sitting on a chair there you are standing up there you are working there you are reading a book there all imagination but doing everything from where you already are the center of the head what will happen you are concentrating your attention there the more you do it the more you will become aware of that place and less aware of the body not at once first you'll become less aware of the hands and the feet then less aware of the legs and the arms then less aware of the bottom of the torso then less aware of the upper part exactly how actual death of the body takes place no difference at all if you experience that just by concentrating attention on your own self where you are in the wakeful state you can experience exactly what death will be when you die and people don't try that they looking for answer somewhere else all the answers can be obtained by you by this simple exercise of withdrawing your attention to your own self where you feel you are no need of searching you are there so if you can withdraw your attention to where you are in the head where you think you are operating from where you are thinking from if you can concentrate on doing things there think of nothing else of course the mind will fight for this because you are now trying to find yourself not the mind this is seeking of yourself mind says why are you going in go out so the mind will bring thoughts of outside remind you of things which you are not even trying to remember so that you remain out that's the only battle that you have to fight with your own mind nobody else we don't have any enemy in this world they are just experiences the only enemy is our own mind that doesn't let us go in if you are able to do creative things nice thing dancing singing inside if you do things which you love outside do them inside if you are able to engage yourself with your attention behind the eyes you will have the same experience when you become unaware of this body you open up and find that you have a being a body which has existed for much longer than this body you will discover that you were there before you were born in this body memory will come back because the mind is still the same is not a different mind you are the same person the same being same mind same mind carrying same memories now you can't even remember what happened a few years ago the memory will become sharp your own self you suddenly find that inside with your imagination you can see touch taste smell do all the thing that you are doing with this physical body that the sense perceptions are not functioning because of the physical body they work independently and if you spend some regular time in that state you will find the sense perceptions are a separate body with a mind and soul same mind same soul that's working in this body 
and practice it daily. And you will have an experience of dying daily and never be afraid of death. Anybody who has had that experience even once is never afraid of death after that. Of course, before you get that experience, some people get scared. But then I always advise them, take it easy. Don't do the whole exercise in one day. Spread it out over time. And you'll be able to get the information about yourself gradually. And it will not scare you. So, if you get that experience regularly, there will be no fear of death left at all in your life. It's a big thing because most people are afraid of dying. They are afraid of death itself. Don't know what will happen. At least you will know what will happen. You will know that when you die, that form of yours, functioning form, with all sense perceptions, will still be alive. You will be able to see things that are happening, going to happen even after you die. There is so much knowledge packed into that memory, packed into that ability to see, foresee. Not available in this physical body where we are trapped. When you release yourself to that ethereal self, that sensory self, the self that continu continues to have the same mind, same soul, same sense perceptions. When you use them, you will find what a wonderful world it is. And you just came for a short time to experience physicality. Now you can experience something different for a longer time. This is step number one to discovering yourself. Of course, it's step number one because you only found out that you are not the physical body. But you are not even the sensory perceptions. That will be step number two. Process to find, to go on step number two, same process. Withdraw your attention from the astral self in the head of the astral self, the sensory self, at the third eye center from where you are operating in that self. It is identical to this. You feel you have a head, you feel you are there in the center and withdraw there and meditate. If you call this a process of meditation, do this meditation there. You can find that even the sense perceptions were merely a cover and a body. That all perceptions can be have had in one go, in one body, which is your own body, which we call our mind. Our mind is also a body. It's a great discovery. We have always been thinking, ourself is the mind, we think. Then we discover, no, mind is a thinking machine. And by doing that, you discover the mind is also just a body, the soul is wearing. Of course, the next step is very rare, very few people have done it, but can be done. Where you can be pulled beyond the mind to your own consciousness, their soul, which creates everything, which is immortal. Even the mind is not immortal. Mind also has a long life. These covers upon ourselves have different lives. This body has the shortest life. Then the astral self or the sensory self is somewhat longer, a few thousand years in physical time. Mind has got a few million years in physical time. But the soul, which is our real self, has no time limit, is never born, never dies. It just uses these bodies to experience time. Time is experienced when we put on the way, put on the garment called mind. There is no time otherwise. It's just a way to experience things. So all this knowledge is lying within us. And the reason why I am sharing this with you is because you are seekers of the same thing. We are co-travelers. I am traveling on the same path to discover the same self which you are traveling. That's why you are here. So therefore I am sharing these experiences that over time you can experience everything. But you need guidance. We need guidance in this process because when you withdraw your attention inside and a new world opens up, like this world, it has a negative side and a positive side. In this physical world, we find a lot of positive things happening, good things happening, a lot of negative things happening. A lot of evil is also there and good is also there. Same thing happens in the inner planes. So if you are not well guided, you can enter into negative territory. So that will not be a good experience. Therefore, to be guided by somebody who has experience, who has already had that experience, is a good thing. 
Now we call these people gurus or masters who are guiding us in meditation so that we stay on the positive side. And there are all kinds of masters. They take us to different areas. But we call some masters, like my master whose picture you see here, Great Master Baba Savan Singh. He was my master. He has been my guide and has guided me throughout my experiences. His guidance goes beyond the mind. I tell you how. No effort or meditation can take you beyond the mind. Because all effort is made by the mind. How can you use something that is making the effort to go beyond it? Therefore, mind cannot take you beyond the mind, no matter how hard you try. Therefore, people talk of an effortless state. In meditation, the highest states are called effortless states, where you don't make an effort. If you don't make an effort, then something else must replace your effort in order that you can go above the mind. What takes us above the mind is what exists above the mind right now. Something that is within the mind cannot be suddenly put beyond the mind. There are some things that are existing beyond the mind even today. And the most important of those things is called love. L-O-V-E, love. Love is not a product of the mind. Cannot be generated by the mind. It along with the soul experiences along the love, but love comes from the soul directly. The distinction is very clear between what is experienced by the mind and the soul. The distinction is the mind always experiences something in time and space. It cannot experience anything that is not in time and space. Soul experiences spontaneity and something that can be without time. When you fall in love with somebody, it's spontaneous. It is not that it took five minutes to fall in love. It doesn't happen like that. Similarly, appreciation of beauty is instantaneous. There are these things, love, appreciation of beauty, intuitive awareness, when you get intuition. I know it is there. Why? I don't know why. Mind takes time to know something. Soul takes no time. These three functions that I am mentioning, appreciation, <coughs> beauty of beauty, intuition, love, they come directly from the soul. Therefore, to go beyond the mind, these are the things that work. Love has a power to pull us. The love has a power to pull our souls. And when we fall in love, our soul is pulled. Mind creates doubt whether it's real or not. Mind can sometimes stop the experience, but does not generate the experience. But our spiritual self, our soul, is what is pulled by love. What we find in the case of a perfect living master, like the great master who initiated me and guided me in my spiritual progress, what we find is they have a unique kind of love which we don't ordinarily find amongst people. The uniqueness is, it is unconditional. There is no condition attached. There is no judgment attached. It is not based upon whether you are a good person or a bad person. It is not based upon anything except that you are a seeker of your own self. Seeking is the only criterion by which you get that experience of love, unconditional love from a perfect living master. That love pulls us. That love pulls us, mind can't even understand it sometimes. Why is it happening? I often give the example of a professor who became a good friend of mine, who was a disciple of this master. He was a skeptic and he was a philosopher. He thought a lot and he would come to the great master and say, Master, what you are teaching is not right. It's all made up. There is no evidence. We do not have any evidence that there are any other forms of life existing, that there is a soul or anything. Nothing is existing. This body is the only thing. This is born, lives a certain life and dies. That's all we know. 
and you are talking of other regions and other levels of awareness they don't exist i am sorry that you are teaching people something that is not correct the great master told the professor sir you have a right to think what you have been taught what you have learned my experience is different i am talking from my experience and they can be different we have a right to disagree so i appreciate your honesty in coming and expressing your opinion but the experiences can be different so my experience is different professor went away next weekend he was back again to tell the great master the same thing master i have come to tell you please don't mislead these people you are misleading thousands of people and making them believe there is a such kind there is a true home and there you will go there there is no such place no evidence exists of those places and people make stories you are also making stories and telling people please don't do it the great master again said what you are saying is your honest opinion because you have not seen anything beyond what is existing here so i have seen something therefore i go by my experience you can go by your experience we have a right to disagree thank you very much for your honest opinion that you given me the professor went away third week and he was back to tell the master the same things so great master said professor you told me the same things twice earlier twice you have come to me to say the same thing you come third time what's the necessity of repeating the same thing and he said master i disagree with you but i don't know i want to come and see you what was pulling him in spite of being a skeptic in spite of being a disbeliever he was being pulled by the love of great master and became one of his finest disciples later on so the pull that comes from an unconditional love is so strange sometimes we can't rationalize it we can't explain it even to ourselves but it pulls us we want to be there again and again so this pull is the one that perfectly the masters show us and they then draw us with our, with that love and love pulls us beyond the mind and takes us to our true home no other way love is the secret of going beyond the mind true love true love why do i call it true love i could call love i call it true love because attachment is being called love nowadays we get attached to something we call it i love my dog i love my cat i love my children love my house i love my car i love everything those are all attachments if one person tells another i love you and the other person says but i don't love you the first person says then i also hate you <laughs> that's the kind of love there is no unconditionality about it it's all conditioned we are passing judgment on somebody by saying you are not fit to be loved or you are fit to be loved in the case of perfect living master there is no judgment at all it's an amazing experience if you get a chance to meet these people you will be surprised you can meet any number of times their love will never change no matter what no matter what your background no matter whether you are passing judgment i am good person i am a bad person it doesn't make any difference to the love that flows from a perfect living master this kind of unconditional love with no judgment very rare experience but you will always get it from a perfect living master good guide the such a master can take us even beyond the mind to our true home if we seek that we'll get it let me tell you the soul seeking is a very powerful thing whatever you seek you'll find most of us are seeking more of thing that we see outside more of us are saying i am sick i want some health i want some more money i want a better house i want a better family want a better relationship all the thing that we are seeking are outside these are desires they attach us to these things and desire and attachment is a real reason for our coming coming again and again desires are not fulfilled and we die before that come back in the same form in the same body same physical form to get our desires fulfilled and the more desires we have the more attachments we have when we have attachments and the body dies the attachments pull us back and we have to come back again but if you are a seeker of your own self 
then you seek nothing and when you find there is so much more inside what is more inside some people say okay you are suggesting that we should go and find ourselves what will we find a little speck of uh, soul or something some little soul a little dot or something i said no you will find the whole universe being created from there some people want to know what is our true home like such khand they call it is a nice place because people have described it as a very nice place they have said they have said that there are it's okay it's not an inner sound it's outer <laughs> people have described satchkhand in many beautiful terms said shiv dayal singh swami ji of agra founder of the radha swami faith he say the tall trees growing there several miles tall laden with jewels rubies and diamonds are laden on them well lot of his so people who attended this courses were ladies they loved to hear that description lot of jewelry there on the trees in satchkhand we like to go there people have described that there are so many other good things happening there these are all physical descriptions of something that is not physical if i were to describe even one line of the truth there it is impossible for us to understand it if i were to tell you the entire creation including the physical creation is all part of such cut there nothing outside of it can we understand it then where are we going then but the truth is is total there is nothing outside of it imagine when we are a follower of a spiritual track spiritual path we experience only one level at one time which we call one reality at one time right now we are at physical reality we think this is the only real thing no matter how much we may try to understand that there's a oh higher regions higher more real regions there's a talk is just words we are still saying these things in this reality i am sitting here talking of higher regions and if i know this is just a created universe who am i talking to if i am taking you all as real taking myself as real that's why i'm talking here we are experiencing one reality at one time not two realities at the same time you have that experience regularly when you go to sleep and have a dream the dream is only real if you are unaware of the sleep wakeful state if you remember the wakeful state when you are dreaming it's just day dreaming it cannot become real when you forget the physical reality dream becomes real when you wake up the dream becomes unreal this becomes real same thing happens at every level of awareness you go to the astral level where the sensory perception alone work no matter we don't need any matter there we can have everything through sense perceptions including creation and perception when you go there that's the only reality we discover that the physical thing was merely a reflection of this was not real and that's the only reality that we are experiencing neither higher nor lower is real when we go to the mind mental state the causal state we discover that's the only reality the sensory perceptions were a creation shadow so were the physical so are dreams they are all the same type only one reality when you go even higher to discover your own soul and discover souls are consciousness units of consciousness and the number is so huge and the space is not the kind of space we know it's a zero space having infinity when we discover totally new things we say that's the only reality the rest was all created but what happens if we reach our true home such khand we find that all realities are part of it they were all created right there and we experience them in our attention one by one one who has reached that state is experiencing all realities at the same time it's not like somebody saying i had my meditational experience i went and saw something now i can tell you a person who has attained that state of reaching out true home 
is in the true home when he's talking to us. He's in each level of experience when he's talking to us at any level. You can't compare that experience with anything else. None of the experiences of any other stage can match that experience. These perfect living masters who come to us, they are speaking from their true home when they talk in physical body. They are talking, they can talk about every level instantaneously because they are not remembering something to tell us. They are there to tell us. They are telling us what they are seeing, what they are actually experiencing. And any one of us can do that. All human beings are equally equip equipped to reach the true home. Secret, what do you need to do that? Seeking. Seek the truth, the ultimate truth. If you seek intermediate, I want to find the power of my mind. You want to develop that, you'll get that. You want to develop psychic powers, you'll get that. You want to have some experiences out of this world, out of body experiences, you'll get that. Those are only single experiences. But to get the experience of your true home, nothing is outside of your true home. All creation is part of that and everything is created right there. We have divided our attention to have experiences at different levels. It's an amazing thing and that is what we can get from a perfect living master if we are seeking that ultimate thing. We have to be seekers of that but very few seekers are that. Most seekers are just wanting some goodies here and some are seeking something better. In I, for example, I tell you something very personal. I normally don't share, but you are. At my age, you are like my children, I feel. I can talk to you. I mentioned to my friend that I had a deal with Great Master. The deal has been misunderstood by some people, so I'm trying to explain now. The deal was based upon a discourse he was giving in which it was a discourse on a verse from Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh scripture, which said that this body of ours, it said, Kaya Nagar Nagar Hai Niko with Sauda Har Raskije. This body is like a township. It has a marketplace. If you want to have a real deal, go to that marketplace. I heard that discourse and went up to Great Master. I said, Master, I know about deals. Deals means the transaction. I give you something, you give me something. Isn't that a deal? He said, yes, that is called a deal. I said, can I give you all my worries? Can I give you all the problem that I face? You handle my worries, you handle my problems and give me all happiness and joy all the time. And he said, deal done. At this age I can confirm he kept his word, I kept mine. Very big deal. The best one can hear of. So when I shared this with my friends, I got over a hundred emails, we want to do the same deal. <laughs> And when they describe the deal, it's very different from what I got. They say, you got a deal and you had a good time. We are working very hard on our jobs. And it's so hard now we to work hard and wish we had a deal. So they are interpreting the deal to mean they won't have to work hard. Let me remind them and remind any others who want a deal. After the deal, great master made me work very hard. <laughs> Every job I had here to make me work hard. I got in a very senior position during my career. I held three full-time jobs. Chief Secretary of a state government, Vice Chancellor of a large university, Resident com Financial Commissioner in the capital New Delhi, three full-time jobs for seven months at the same time. I got two months, two hours sleep every 24 hours, mostly in the car while the chauffeur was driving me. The deal was still on. It doesn't mean that you don't have to work. What the deal was, I was not worried about it. The worry was taken away, not the, not the karma. 
some people think the deal means your karma is going to be modified all bad karma off good karma comes on. i have had major surgeries prostate surgery and gall bladder removed totally knee replacements i am almost half a bionic man <laughs> my shoulders were replaced by gm in an incident long ago knees were replaced now my eyes are, my ears are artificial hearing aids eyes are not real with lenses on on them my teeth are not natural now i am all artificial man the deal is still on so it does not mean that your karma is being finished karma will go on the events will take place masters themselves have the, the same karmas like we have <coughs> and masters go through all the all masters without exception <coughs> have gone through their karma in the same way karma is a very great thing to be built up as a human being if you don't have karma you die you won't be here people say is my karma finished i said no you are still here <coughs> and karma is still here i had my problems i had a i wanted to be a doctor i did not take the right subjects in my school so i could not become a modern allopathic doctor so i studied homeopathy i became a homeopathic doctor and even treated great master along with a very famous homeopath dr pierre schmidt from geneva we were both treating great master when he died to the end he had prostate cancer he died of cancer like others even great master the karma does not go away like that karma creates our body i must tell you there was a american disciple Dr Julian Johnson and he when he came he was very impressed by great master and he used to say to master master i have a friend in kentucky there and he wants some help from you his health is not good great master would say okay i'll pray to my master to help him he would ask for these little things one day i remember julian johnson and i walking to the river he used to take walks to the bias river and he told me what a foolish man i have been i have been trying to beg the master for change in the karma of people little realizing that karma has to be good and bad to become a human being if all karma is good we won't be here we'll be up in some heavens if all karma is bad we'll be some hell it's only a combination of good and bad a roller coaster type of karma that brings us into the human being and i was trying to tell him to change it i'll never do that again i still remember his words i can't forget it because first time he presented to me a case for good and bad karma that both are necessary for us to be here and if we are not here we can't seek and we cannot find a perfect master such a important thing about karma karma is not taken away by any deal i had a good practice in a city called lahore in 1947 the country was divided there were a lot of writing going on in the transfer of population taking place i decided to go and see the master who was in the dera in bias in iramritsar i i must have been attached to some things i still remember a new watch i had bought it looked better than my i e and what is called iphone apple watch that looked better to me i bought a new pen gold parker 71 or something that came up just at that time i did not take them with me that there is writing going on they will loot me i had 5 rupees indian currency in my pocket and a train ticket return train ticket to go to the dera in bias to see great master i went there i said master come to see you there's a lot of writing going on he said you need not go back i never went back i started my life afresh with 5 rupees he made the first pair of pajamas for me in the with the tailor there i had my share of that when we left the dera to go and settle down somewhere looking for houses i spent several months staying in a park 
under the sky. No house. I had joined with another doctor. We got a small little room to practice. He said, I use the room, what will you use? I said, I use the sky. <coughs> I lived in the open several months. Can I say that I, the deal was off? The deal was not off at all. The karma is not taken away. <coughs> Today, like anybody else, I have my usual what they call problems, but I consider them my master's problems. I run short of money. I go to my friends, I have to borrow. I go to banks and borrow. I have a debt. My karma brought me a very expensive wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I have to maintain it. I have a big house. I don't need it. But I maintain it. A karma about which, about my wife, children and so, great master had hinted to me and mentioned when I was 11 years old. I didn't even know if I'd get married. But he told me about what was going to come. And the fact that what he said has come out right, right till now, is a big thing, that he knew everything. I have a big debt. In fact, I have told my friend Jonathan, because he has big connections, I have told him, find some good buyer for my house, so I can pay off my debts. And my definition of good buyer is, he pays me enough for the house to clear my debts. Secondly, the new buyer, when he becomes owner of the house, Jonathan, are you listening? I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> the new buyer, when he becomes owner of the house, will take me as a tenant. <laughs> I'll pay rent till I am alive in this body and also till my wife is alive. So, we, this is normal karma. There is no change in the karma at all. But I don't worry because of the deal. Now, people think that you can easily make the deal. I can tell you, master can easily make the deal. Difficulty is for us to keep it. One person tried to make a deal and as, as soon as he stepped out, he said, I worry if the deal will really work. <laughs> the deal is off. You're not supposed to worry. We worry so much. We have made a habit of worrying. So therefore, how can you keep a deal? It's far more difficult for a disciple to maintain this deal than for the master. Masters will give you the deal. Perfect living masters will certainly give the deal if you are ready for it. Your readiness means that you yourself are never going to worry anything and have full faith, 100% unshakable faith and trust. Master will handle everything. And I can tell you, he will handle everything. It is not that you will not go through all the circumstances that are created by a karmic pattern which creates our life. Our lives are created here by our own karma. Some people think karma must be imposed from somewhere else. Not at all. It's the same self, the same being that is now talking, that is now thinking, created those events of which this is a reaction that you get this kind of a life. Nobody has created the karma for us. It is our own doing. We can't blame anybody. Yet we like to blame everybody. People want to blame God if they can't find somebody else closer by to blame for their karma. What is karma? It is merely the designing of certain events in life and events with which part of your emotional content is tagged on. Your emotions play out with those events. And as those emotions play out with those events, you are settling your old karma. But when you decide with your free will and deliberation to do something more, you create a new karma. <coughs> Some people ask me, how do we know which is the new karma and which is an old karma? I tell them, very easy. If something happens without your thinking, old karma being settled. If you are thinking hard and then deciding what to do, new karma is created. Your free will has to be used to create new karma. A deliberation has to go on in the head. That shall I do this or not do this? That should I do it? That's what creates new karma. The rest is just settling of old karma. 
And some people say, this life I am going to lead without creating karma. I was very impressed when I first came to this country and somebody told me a phrase, go with the flow. I said, these are wonderful people. They'll never create karma. If you go with the flow, you'll never create karma. But nobody goes with the flow. And people are all deciding things for themselves. They're not just reacting and following whatever happens in circumstances. And supposing somebody is able to do that, which is extremely rare, somebody is able to say, I'm going to leave, lead a life, create no new karma. There is so much waiting for us in a reserve we have created, which is called Sinchit Karma. So much reserve. We can generate several lifetimes only picking up pieces from there. It's one lifetime is not created only from one past lifetime. Pieces are picked up from so many lifetimes we have had. And the proof, if you want to see the proof of these previous lifetimes and how this karma is created, you can do it in meditation by going to the causal state. Meditate with the inner self that you find. Meditate and go within. You can see all your old karma. You can see all your past lives led as human human beings or as other forms of life. They are all visible. They are all recorded here. Everything is stored inside. Nothing is to be found outside. All the answers to all our questions are inside. I'll take a break now because I'm getting some signs from the back. You enjoy a lunch break, late snack break. And I'll see you at 3.30 again.